So this is a fun floor move that you can work into either your low flow or just in general your tricks. Um, it's very similar to a twisted grip handspring, except for you're on a forearm. You don't have to have a handspring to work on this move. Okay. It's a lot of very similar muscle engagement, but it doesn't take the same strength that it does for the handspring, and there's less potential for injury on this one because of the stacking of the shoulders, the lower proximity and closer to the pole with this one. So I would consider this an intermediate move. So for this one, um, it is going to be a twisted grip. And to go into this, one of the things I find that people tend to do first and foremost is they put their arms too close together. So I am going to place my forearm on the ground. The placement of this hand, depending on the base of your pole, what it looks like, um, I like to grab onto the base of the pole. Some people like to have an open hand just around the base. You can even just have your hand nearby the pole. I prefer grabbing on, but it's just personal preference, okay? So if you have uh, a strong draw towards one or the other, try that out, try both ways, okay? So my bottom hand is holding on to the pole. My forearm is on the pole, and I wanna make sure that my upper arm, my bicep, is stacked. When you go into this, you don't wanna be off center either way or in. So think about trying to keep that upper arm as vertical as possible, okay? When you go to grab on with that second arm, Grab as high as you can, even to the point where you feel like that lower elbow is kind of off the ground a little bit. And then as you sink into it, that elbow will touch the ground. I oftentimes see people sink into this and then grab here, and they can't pull out of this shoulder, and they end up really compressing here. That's where you are going to jam your shoulder. So think about reaching as high as you can with that twisted grip. So I'm going to get my forearm in place. I'm going to drop my head, tucking my chin slightly to look back, and reach up as high as I can with this arm. Okay. You can even, like I said, reach up high enough that this elbow comes off and then press so it just barely touches the ground. Okay. Um, getting up into this part, I'm almost slow press kicking combination into it, whatever feels most comfortable to you. And my shoulder is next to the pole. I don't want to have the pole behind my shoulder. I've got it just next to it to the outside. Okay. So I'm looking back. The same leg as hand is going to kick up and go around the pole into a straddle V, very similar to a regular handspring, okay? So I'm gonna get up on my toes, walk them in as close as I can, this leg kicks, and then think of rotating to face the pole. Then the inside leg is gonna to touch the pole, okay? So I'm squeezing with this inside leg. Once that leg is in place, the second leg can come over. As soon as it clears, bend, release the bottom hand, and bring it out. Um, it's basically a knee hook from a handspring. Same motion as we would do from up high for those of you that have done that. So the mechanics of where the legs are going. And I'll go through a couple of um, modifications for some of you that this transition is maybe, you're not quite there yet, but some kind of stepping stones that you can go to to work towards it. When you go into your straddle, initially my torso is facing this way, kind of sideways to the pole. When I get up into that V, I wanna think about turning my hips to face the pole, okay? And then once I get that hips and shoulders, I wanna bring the same leg as my top arm, in this case, it was my right, right hand, right arm. Um, I wanna think about bringing my thigh in to touch the pole, which means also my shoulder ends up coming into contact with the pole as well, okay? So bring it as close to the top of your shorts line as you can on that skin, that will definitely help you. Keep that contact, really think about squeezing or pressing your leg into the pole. Once you're there, that gives you time to start to bring the second leg up. The second leg, think about skimming the pole, keeping it as close as you can. If you take it around, you'll have a tendency to roll away from the pole. So think about just barely skimming the pole. As soon as it clears the pole, you're gonna bend that knee and think about squeezing your knee to your face. Now here's the timing thing where a lot of people get stuck is as soon as that leg clears, they're still holding on with this bottom hand and we kind of get stuck in this little twisty pretzel thing. As soon as that second leg clears the pole and starts to bring your knee to your face, let go of your bottom hand, okay? Otherwise you end up tied up in a knot. Um, as that leg clears and you're pulling into the hip, if you let go with your hand at the same time, your body is gonna automatically right itself as long as you keep pulling with those arms. If you wait too long, you've missed the timing and it kind of built like a slight momentum when you brought that leg in. So if you bring the leg all the way down and this hand is still there, you let go 
and you're going to oftentimes find that you're kind of stuck. Okay, so let's kind of look at where the timing is on that. Into here, up, straddle, first hip, second hip, as soon as my knee bends, my hand comes off. Okay, so for those of you that this kick up um, is maybe a little scary or you're not quite sure if you're ready for that version yet, I want you to work on trying to kick back, kick past with the first leg and catching the second leg. Okay, so we're gonna start everything the same. My first leg's gonna go past, my second leg's gonna catch. Okay, once I have that, now I can bring this leg in. Then work on bringing the second one over. Okay, so first leg will clear. Second leg, ideally, the closer to your ankle you can catch will be good, but if it catches at your knee initially, at least that way you feel secure. So very important on this is the direction of your hips. When we first take up, my hips are this direction. Once I get up into the V, my hips are this direction. And then when I take that second leg over, you wanna think about tipping your hips so that your belly button is towards the pole. So really think like as if you're doing like a cradle spin or a tuck spin, that you're curling around the pole. Otherwise the tendency with this is for people to roll away. So really think about trying to bring your outside hip and curling into the pole with this one, okay? So bottom arm, either holding on the pole or down, elbow, make sure that upper arm is stacked, pressing out of that shoulder, make sure you're not sinking. Top hand, reach as high as you can and make sure you're engaging that shoulder, pulling down, same as you would for a handspring. From there, the same leg as arm is gonna kick up and over, hips are gonna rotate to face the pole. The same leg as arm is going to touch the pole first. Make sure you feel that contact with your thigh. Once that feels secure, the thigh, which means also the shoulder is going to be at the pole, start to take the second leg over. As the second leg comes over, as soon as it clears, think tuck your knee to your chest, turn your hips to the pole, release the bottom hand, and you can reach up and grab, and that will bring you back up to a sitting position. Or you can drop it to a split, however you want to. Okay, so this is a fun little floor transition that you can work into your low flow or just general tricks. Try it out. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. If you have any requests for future tutorials, I'd love to hear them. Leave those in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please share it with a friend and subscribe to my channel and come back every week for new tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.